Hello and welcome back to the Reaction Time podcast, where we have the return of the prodigal son, uh, Mister Mister David. Hello, hello. I'm I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still. I I we part of what part of what we <laughs> what we are recording now is because I am conscious and available. Two rarities within the first three weeks of parenthood. <laughs> Welcome to the club, my friend, of right? <laughs> finding consciousness and <laughs> functionality. Yeah, I, I think that both my son and my wife are asleep, which is good, um, and and we take those. <laughs> we 100% take those. Um, just like Cloud9 took a lot of L's uh, <laughs> in this last little uh, section of the Rumble tournament, and I think that's where we're going to start. Um, I'm a sad lad. How is everyone else doing? I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I learned not to care about NA a long time ago, my friend. It's bad for your mental. <laughs> so here's actually where I'm going to be weird and actually optimistic about all of this. Uh, optimism number one. First seed versus second seed for NA actually doesn't matter much when you have uh, most likely a Chinese top two team and a Korean top two team in your group anyways. Like, there's there's not a big gap there. So, you know... It's not like a huge loss to lose that first seed anymore. Um, and uh, so like that, that makes things cool. It actually makes it easier because the odds are the first seed in your group now can be PSG talent at the end of the year, as opposed to getting damn one or RNG or FPX. So, you know, you take those. The, and, and if we're like, let's, let's talk about the upsides. Cause we, we do need to kind of step back and look at this going back to the LCS to some degree before we talk about the semis and finals of this tournament, because C9 is done. That's what it is. Um, and we can do the breakdown of that in a bit. But let us recall our conversations about C9 as this split developed. Let us recall, if we think all the way back to lock-in, um, when Fudge ran it down, on Aurelia in those games and just got trashed by the community. Um, not ready for the role, not a good replacement. Just just all the way down. And for him to come out of this tournament with the best possible reputation of any member of C9, coaching staff, players, anyone, is something that I think that organization can build on because like Perks and Sven are going to bounce back. I feel confident about that. They've been here long enough. They know what they're doing. And I do think this, this is the, this is the most embarrassing result Perks has ever had. Yes. In his career. Total at all. Um, and I do think that there's going to be some motivation to fix that coming back to NA. I could be wrong about that, but to have what is, has widely been perceived as C9's weakest spot turn into their biggest strength, kind of because everything else fell apart. I think you can rebuild everything else back to the point that it was at. And if Fudge keeps where he was at through the course of this tournament of being C9's best player on form for this the entire stage of 10 games, they're going to come out of this a better team. And I'll give you that, but at the same time, we're not looking for Cloud9 to come back and be good in North America, who do? Like, we're consistently seeing when North American teams go to international play in these tournaments, they struggle to adapt. They sometimes come in with a game plan that just really doesn't work or doesn't, or doesn't come in with a game plan at all. And, and we see this again and again. Each stage of this tournament, there was just really, really bad plans and ideas that they just could not shake off. Like, I, I, like having... Switching to the AP jungle meta was a, a shift. Like picking Kindred into like a Nar centric uh, meta, just really like I I didn't like Perks's uh, picks with the Victor and stuff. And and uh, that's what I want to see is like adaptation or or better beads on these metas. Like what why is North America incapable of doing that in international play? What what is because that is a common thread where like we don't perform in the first week. That we get a little bit of hope because we get a good few games down, and then we just lose it again because we can't adapt to the adaptation. Or you have a good first week, 
let us let us recall what world's 2019 c9s um previous finest hour going 3-0 in the first week and everything was salty and then the 0-10 <laughs> run back of everyone being garbage in week two like it can go both ways and has gone both ways but as you pointed out the through line with that is c9 came into that tournament so i think that was 2019 two years ago is it the hacker on top it it was the it was the bot lane strategy the Tristana because mm. Tristana wasn't in meta and Tristana hard push towers was With something that nobody in their group was ready for week one and they looked great they looked prepared they had a strategy it worked out well and then they came into that second week and got destroyed because they had nothing else ready and and, and now like we saw them try stuff right you pointed out the Kindred pick we saw. Obviously, in a game that didn't matter, Perks played mid Callista. Um, you've got these different, like the AD picks that are going going around in the mid lane, and and it's stuff that if, if we look at Perks's champion pool in particular, it's not stuff that he was playing as much in NA. Like, would I have blamed them for trying the Yone in a any of these games in which you have an AP jungler because AP jungle is the meta right now? You get to play the champion that you tried to force in NA all the time. And he won and it on the works in your team comp. Play that one. Please. I like slightly stand up for C9 in all of this. Because I actually thought that this was very a positive experience for this org, like in addition to the fudge upgrades, in thinking about how this was potentially the worst possible C9 meta as you look at their players and their team. Like the worst meta possible for how this, who these team, who the players are on this team and how they approach the game. Where, like, uh, Blobber can play in tank jungle metas. He can play aggressive early game junglers in these metas. He can play scaling um, junglers that we've seen before. This mage meta really threw off his game plan and how he approaches things, where he likes champions where he can go in. And so, like, watching him try and play Morgana and try and throw out bindings, the only time he looked good on that champion was when Perks was on the mid Callista and could actively throw him into the enemy team. And so, like, this is th this is very clearly, like, a not-blabber meta that then evolved here at this tournament, potentially due to, like, what the best junglers in this tournament were playing, and that made it very unfortunate. But then also, it really wasn't a great Perks meta either. Like, and that was why they tried, like, all these different ranged AD mid laners is because uh, Yone didn't feel good into some of these comps necessarily. And so they were trying to play all these different mid laners, including the Kindred pick, like, and the Callista, which actually I thought was great. And so it's, it, so it was really interesting to see how they tried to adapt in these different comps and failed, but then to see really, like, this was the worst possible meta for this team, and I don't think this meta is going to last much longer. Um, the the Rumble Morgana jungle won't be here at Worlds at the end of the year, most likely. And uh, so we'll see how things evolve from there. But to me, this is like a kind of a non-event as far as this team's like overall ceiling is concerned for me. And the big thing we can get is that they have experience now playing against teams who do know how to re-pressure them on objective pushes and make them think about how to play the macro game in ways that the teams in the LCS weren't, where now they've actually had teams that will trade you on objectives when you're pushing on one side of the map, or who if you or will punish if you opt into a trade of objectives and are like Baron for Nexus. <laughs> and then we'll and then we'll push in and take the Nexus or even earlier in the game, like if you go to take the top turret, um, opting into like a dragon for turret trade, they'll take the cake and eat it too and take the dragon and the turret and another turret on the other side of the map, which we also saw in some of their losses where it's like they're opting into these trades, expecting teams to be passive and to play at their, at like their pace and to let them own the tempo. Getting experience playing against teams that don't do that is going to be very valuable, not just for C9, but for all of these rosters that might have been less challenged in their own regions as we go into the second half of the year. The other thing, and this is not just a C9 takeaway, but it's it's worth pointing out, um, the loss to Pentanet, which functionally eliminated them from the tournament, even if there was other stuff going on. 
um, was disrespectful. And if like, like I know you guys talked about the, these games on duo lane probably, and I don't want to step on any points we've already made, but a theme throughout this tournament is if you are too disrespectful to an opponent in draft at this level of international competition, wild card or not, you're going to get punished for it. I, I was watching back bods from the first stage of the tournament and the first detonation focus me Dom one game where Khan is 0-3 in eight minutes to an Urgot because he blind-picked Gangplank. It, it was a disrespectful pick, and these teams are good enough to punish you with it. C9 gives up Senna Tom Kench in draft to Pentanet, who, if you watched through their games in the Rumble stage, Pradith had looked like the, uh, probably the team's biggest problem after doing reasonably well in the first stage of the tournament. He'd gotten punished in every lane he'd played into. So you give your opponents probably weakest player on form, the easiest champion to pilot, the safest champion to pilot with all the protection you can ask for with decoy on Tom Kench. Oh, look, he goes deathless and you lose. Gee, I wonder how that happens. Like, that loss is as much on Miffy as it is on any player on the team, to me. Yeah, and th that's what I'm speaking to adaptation and the ability to play, like, game after game after game of these best of ones. There there, there seems to be, I, it, it seems like a, like a protocol issue or, like, a research issue. It's like, they don't, they'll look really comfortable going into, like, the RNG game. And they know what they, they have a plan, they know what they're going to do. And then a lot of these other games just skirt past them with like PSG and, and Pentanet. And, and then at earlier other points in, in, in the tournament when they lost uh, the detonation, fo yeah. detonation focus me as well. So it, it, it feels like a company issue. Like this, this, is, this is something that is functionally not working consistently when like you're going to win if you're consistent with your practice. I agree. And and this is where I think like uh PSG uh Talon looked really good is is that they're coming in with plans and executing on them. And and, and the cast emphasized this well, but I'm going to point it out again. They executed all these plans and drafts and strategies well with a sub ADC who they didn't play the whole split with. If anybody's skin game communication should have been screwed up, it was theirs. And yet, Duggo looked like one of the better players on their team. To be fair, like subbing in an ADC is the easiest role on teams of this level because you 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 kind of just give them instructions, right? Uh, where it's like, all are right, you saying ADCs are dumb. Well, Eric? I'm saying you tell them to sit in lane while I go roam, like stay, and then you go roam, Eric. and then you come back, and then you like, you know, <laughs> and then you team fight, and that's that's you, kind of you how say it works. this like it's so easy, and yet I know for a fact that you play ADC in solo queue, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I play ADC in solo queue like a like the silver player I am. So, uh, but yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. like I don't know. I get those points, and Doggo has looked phenomenal. Um, if you if you hear the cast, like they've really liked that his approach is more aggressive because it gives the team more points of pressure to play through. However, you know, as usual, the biggest theme running through this tournament and running through League of Legends in this new world order is that um, having the best jungler means you win games. And so, surprise, surprise, uh, PSG Talon has the best Rumble jungle in the tournament. And hence, they look like one of the best teams. And uh, so that's another part where I'm not reading too far into this in like long term consequences. When Rumble is absolutely ludicrously OP right now and how this in how these games play out. And River's like the only jungler who really knows the nuance of how to manage heat as well as um, has teams that are well set up and and uh, position like position fights in such a way so that they're good equalizers from jungle rumble because jungle rumble is like is really fascinating in this tournament because the clear speed is good so these junglers can get immense cs uh presence and caps in how these games play out but like when c9 picks jungle rumble 
and has lanes that are neutral or losing, then Blabber gets behind and is invaded on and is put three levels down at 15 minutes or whatever is going on. Um, or flip side, you see these games from um, from El Yoyo where he's on Rumble, he's doing great on CS, but then the team can't team fight well with the Rumble coordinated with the rest of the pieces that they've built out, which is really fascinating that like, River really actually knows how to play this champion and and looks good on these comps. So to me, like that's that's really the story of PSG Talon's like above and beyond success so far is that is that River on this pick has looked phenomenal. Uh, we did talk about going into this tournament though, how this is a pure upgrade on PSG Talon from last year at Worlds with Maple and Midlane as uh, like as like the big roster upgrade they made. And you can see it in how they approach this game. They even had some assassin games with Maple hard carrying on Akali. Like this this roster is phenomenal and uh, really works well. Hanabi has also seen a ton of growth throughout this series, who I always considered the weak link of Flash Wolves into PSG Talon, and uh, managed to not look like trash in some of these series. Um, so I've been very impressed with what they can do when they have a winning jungler. The assassin play in mid lane is one of the things I wanted to highlight going into the semifinals. I I think Chaz might have been the first person to break out the Kiana in the tournaments, and then we've we've seen now. I think Maple played it as well on the last day, um, and we've seen Chaz Chaz brought up the Zed, and like there's clearly a spot somewhere in here for assassins in mid lane, and. Now that you're down to the semifinals, I'm curious to see if there's going to be a challenge laid by any of these four mid laners that we have left. Because Showmaker has been playing Zoe, and he's the best Zoe in the world, so okay, that's fine. He's very good at it. But he is a notorious Katarina one-trick from his past. He knows how to play Assassins and has the mechanics. And and I'm very curious if, like, if Humanoid locks in a Victor or an Oriana or something, if Showmaker is like, okay, give me the give me the Kiana, give me an Akala, give me something I can really punish this with, because I think that there's we've seen just enough in this mid lane meta of assassins kind of nibbling around the fringes in the right places that I think it's there, and. It's been a while other than a Kali since we've really seen Assassin presence in pro play. And I'm hoping that's one of the things I'm hoping to see in the semifinals is like, let's let's see some lane matchups that might have some more spice in them because the potential's there. Well, now we're in best of five territory where yep. that gets to happen more. Um, One thing I will call out with the Assassin thing is that um, to kind of back up that idea is that a lot of these games are still solved around early game presence. Um, can you take Rift Herald and First Dragon? Can you get both Scuttle Crabs? Can you have pushing lanes in all three lanes and then snowball an objective lead from that point? Uh, it really has been a big theme where, where uh, only in a few more isolated <laughs> circumstances have teams made big comebacks. And it's mainly been damn one. So, um, so we'll have to see if these assassin picks can get an early lead. And because, like, really, what it'll be about is can you get an early lead? Um, and it doesn't, to me, matter so much what you're playing, as long as you make that happen either through getting gank pressure, which then enables you to get that first blood on the Kiana or um, on the Akali or on these champions. Or on the flip side, can you play these wave clear ma uh, mages and exert map presence to enable your jungler to go full invade and then take over the game that way? Both seem very valid as long as you do get that advantage. And you and because like that's purely what it's about. The assassin pick is higher risk, but if you know what you're doing in these matchups and your opponent's doing, that looks really good. Uh, I definitely don't think you can let Showmaker play Zoe into these assassins. That's a recipe for disaster. So you you'll need to find need to ban it against someone. You really almost do. So you'll need to find some way to balance out some of these picks. Um, like having a plan expect... and executing on it. 
I also will expect in the best of fives that people will not opt into the double AP jungle scenarios as often, where teams will be more willing to ban out Morgana, Rumble, or both, and then force these more um, off-meta jungle scenarios, where like if Udyr and uh, and Rumble are all banned, like what do people play? And will it be like Lilia Nidalee, as we've seen before, or will it be the Vola Bear? Like, what happens in that scenario when the whole gamut is banned? Well, and, I and swear, if I see Lilia again, going I... back to watching the opening groups games instead of the um, the Rumble stage games, is you're seeing the 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 Nidalee Lilia picks running around over Udir who I, I thought we nerfed him and Chemtank, and yet, if you look at the tournament as a whole, Udir is the most picked jungler in the tournament thus far. And, yep, it just works. The 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 last point I want to make on the Assassin thing is, we, we saw this in, in the last PSG game, um, Rumble being such a thing, and Scuttle priority being such a thing, is part of why Kiana is there, because Kiana in a river is a problem. Um, Kiana getting to fight over scuttles and fight over vision in choke points is a problem for the enemy team. And her ult combined with equalizer is disgusting. So, like, maybe it's just her working her way into the meta because she works so well with Rumble and because she works so well with these vision games, but it's She's a great pick in the meta specifically. Yeah, this is just boiling down to is like we're opting into a play style, we're opting into a plan, we have to execute on it with success. And it seems, which is why Udyr is so appealing, is that it comes out of priority around objectives, even the micro objectives, which is like double crab maybe into a steal or a conflict. Like Udi, that's 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 where you play Udyr. Um, if Leeson wasn't so good in lane, we might see him come back where he does have those kind of uh, opportunities, but he doesn't have the clear speed. So that's why I don't want to see Lilia. Um, Nidalee is probably the better option in those scenarios. Um, but at the end of the day, b build your team, build your plan, and, and go into these best of fives with options, but stick to that plan and don't bail on it. I think that's where we saw... Uh, the separations of these teams shake out in the Rumble stage was where they kind of half got what they wanted and then they didn't know how to complete it and then they didn't know how to fulfill on, on the half plan that they had so they just looked limp and they just got what was perceptively outclassed um, or out macroed is, is, is when uh, you're losing two crabs and, and then you flash uh <laughs> <laughs> or or things of that nature where you're opting into uh, not really objective control and then you lose at the objective fights because you're not built to actually control object. The other, the other jungle pick that I think we could see that I think is hiding around the fringes, I'm pretty sure we've only seen it once in the tournament, but it was in a Pentanet game, which they won. It was the tiebreaker against UOL. They brought out Karthus, who is an AP jungler, has a fast clear, has brings good damage, the late game, is riskier than some of the other ones, just in terms of the invade. Like, let let us fondly remember El Yoya getting three guys blast planting onto his blue buff and having a very sad game. <laughs> um, that's the kind of thing that if you play Karthus and that happens to you, it's going to be a bad day. Metal Gear Solid but... exclamation point. <laughs> so... <laughs> But, like, I think that there's a chance Karthus could be around if, like, as Eric said, if you ban out Udyr, Rumble, Morgana. Fiddlesticks. I, like, if a team wants to play an AP jungler, I think Karthus could be in there if a team wants to play around him. Because it is a little bit different than, like, playing around a Lilia and team fighting around a Lilia. But just food for thought. I liked, like, I, that, I loved that game for Pensanet, the that that closing game to get them into the rumble stage, the the comp they built around the Karthus I thought worked really well. Yeah. But that gives me a glimmer of hope for Fiddle Six, because even though the game that he did make an appearance wasn't great, the idea was there and, and 
it's still better than Lilia. So don't pick Lilia, pick anyone else, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Literally anyone else. <laughs> so I think we should go into the semifinal or quarterfinal matchup. No, semifinal matchup. Semifinal matchups. I know where we're at. Uh, which is. Damn. We we've talked more about Royal and PSG, so let's start there. Yeah. Um, Eric, how much of a chance percentage wise would you give PSG to spring the massive upset? Uh, I'd go with like fifteen. Uh, it's it's pretty low to me. Uh, I think this is the most unfortunate semi configuration for upsets, like for both sides, yeah. which is fascinating. Um, where like I definitely think River plays the best Rumble in the tournament. However, uh. Getting early leads against RNG uncontested is very difficult. And uh, RNG is pretty strong right now. Um, I uh, So I, I just don't see them stacking up well that way. Uh, and like the top side of the map is going to be obviously, as always with RNG, where I'm expecting massive swings. Where uh, Zhao, who's going to get some favorable matchup, he's going to play Jace, he's going to play Lucian top. And uh, he's going to play Nar, and then punish Hanabi and get jungle roams and support roams and mid lane roams. And uh, and then they're just going to like uh, five man top a few times and then the game's going to be over. Uh, that's Well, and, and the, the flip side of this on the PSG side is I think you have to try and attack mid lane, which is why yeah. I think the assassin picks could come into it. Because we we have seen Cryin get solo killed in assassin matchups this tournament multiple times. And caught out like, a lot. There is something there that you can exploit if you've got a matchup to do it. Maple has already shown the willingness to play assassins in this tournament. He's got the skill to do it. Like, I I think you should try to invest in getting a lead mid lane. Honored question. What are the odds that RNG, after, like, going down to one in this series, uh, pulls in their... Um, sub top laner and rotate Zhaohu mid lane <laughs> yes. for like assassin v assassin into maple Oof. as maple how tilted would you be <laughs> 100% tilted <laughs> I don't think Xiaobai looked that good when they tried to do that so I think that would be a risky move if they want if they felt forced to do that but it would be interesting <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think I about agree on your percentages. It's just there's, there's not enough, there's not enough to attack in how Royal plays the game for PSG, and I just, I have a hard time seeing them get what they would need to do and execute through the end of the game three times, and that's like you can see best of ones. Like I could, I could see Royal winning or um, PSG winning a best of one for sure. But I don't think they can execute it three times out of five. And that's, I think, that's when when we get to this stage of the tournament, as Stephen pointed out, like, it's it's harder. I, I think PSG will take a game. And, like, they and if I'm trying to make a bold prediction, I think they take game one. But then I think Royal wins at 3-1. What I'm hoping is that they take game one with something that hasn't been quite seen yet, or at least from them, and so that they're demanding the respect bans on it or for forcing uh, like what is the support mf of this tournament gonna be right, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> coming out at the last leg i, I like, hope it's... what else do we have in the and dom one's the team that's gonna do that for the record like just be ready for that they i know they have something do they play first like, Meryl always has some weird crap that he wants to do <laughs> and i like i think Beryl's problem is he hasn't been playing well enough to get to, to play his fun stuff <laughs> <laughs> no. He's been running it down a little too much to get to play fun stuff, but mm. I I do not trust Dom One not to have some curveball they're gonna throw at Mad Lions. They're gonna do it game one too. They'll probably ban Wu Kong, unlike Royal. <laughs> I am very distressed. Maybe about not. That. It, so the thing, the other thing to keep in mind is that you know, I think Khan is to have actual answers into Wukong than Zhao Hu, which is very bizarre. Like, Wukong is actually a very surprising counterpick into Zhao Hu specifically, if we look at top laners, where Zhao Hu's main picks have been Nar, have been Jace, have been top Lucian, 
And Wukong is actually very solid into all three of those champions, if not in lane, then in the gameplay stage. And so, like, it's really fascinating how, like, how good Armut's picks are specifically into Zhao Hu and how that helps them out in this pick. Because, like, for example, Fudge's top lane counter of Malphite is not good into Zhao Hu, <laughs> as we saw happen. I'm so, a lot like, Jace. Good luck. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just like hard shove or like dilution into the Malphite, yep. which you'd think Malphite should be okay in, but then like Zhao Hu had him under turret at half HP the entire game. Like, and then like had the jungle show up and it's like, all right, you're off of a wave of farm. So like the Wukong pick was much better into specifically Zhao Hu's champion pool. Like Khan, I have a feeling has better picks into the Wukong and might even get counter pick in some of these situations. Whereas the whole point of Zhao Hu's champion pool is you just lock that Lucian like phase one of pick ban. And then what are they going to do? You know, like you have three lanes that could go to reasonably. Um, and then actually threatening that and not having teams know where it's going makes it so difficult, especially when one of them is so oppressive, like in top. Um, so I don't know on, on that other side of the matchup. I, I, I have a really hard time seeing Mad being able to take this. Um, both teams have inting bot lanes right now, which is fascinating. So there is a potential that Ghost and Barrel just run it down enough to actually <laughs> throw these games. But it seems really hard when Showmaker and Khan are doing absolutely absurd amounts of damage on every single champion that they get. And and like even even if you don't look at them, Canyon is arguably the best jungler in the world. I and don't think it's arguable. I think it's I, pretty I, and it's pretty clear. Elioya, for all of the plaudits that he has received, is a rookie playing in his first international tournament in his first split. Um, he's been great. He's been one of Mad's better players. He's gotten them to this point. I am concerned about Canyon against Elioya, uh, especially with yet again like this jungle meta, right? Yep. So what Elioya did to get Mad through finals was he pulled out pressure junglers. He also played the Vola Bear. He uh, gave them initiative. Uh, he specifically had champions where if his jungle gets invaded, he can show up at his lane unexpected and gank and then snowball bot lane by turret diving level three. You know, this is stuff that's harder to do when you're playing Morgana or Rumble. Like you can't just turret dive level three on Rumble. And so it's like, it's a very different meta for like how he has been equipped to like bail his team out of their faults and so it's a lot harder for him in these scenarios if like Kenyon gets this pressure advantage and gets to invade into the enemy jungle because uh showmaker is one of the few mid laners who actually can deal with humanoids like wave management because humanoids wave management has been what's so incredible that's looked very good at in the playoffs in lec and in this tournament where he gets really good back timings and builds CS leads off of that in mid lane. And uh, Showmaker's like one of the few who's not going to give that to him, it seems. Where is Eve? Is there a reason she's not played that I'm just not thinking of? They're clear. They're clear, the clear. clear is too slow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. E even with like the double cam. Name, name literally any champion in the game. If they're not being played right now, it's because their clear sucks. Okay, I was yeah. I don't know. The reason <laughs> Udyr's still in it, even after the nerfs, yeah. is because it's like, his good. clear speed is still too good. Yep. Like, everything is about, like, getting that full rotation of your jungle as fast as possible, so that they spawn again as fast as possible. Mm. So then you get, like, an experience lead and then uh, can get to level 6 before the enemy team. And then by doing that, if you have three solo laners effectively approaching that dragon fight, as opposed to two solo laners in that fight, it's a big deal. Um, one of the hints you get from the client now is that usually the experience from a level up is worth more gold than a kill. And so if you think about like these two level leads that junglers and these power clear metas have been getting... That's a lot of impact, right? That you can get out of what's happening if you just can power clear before they yep. can get on the map. Yep. Get ready for Canyon to play, play in Italy and have a 50 CS lead in at least one of these games. That is, I am expecting that to happen once. Yucky. Probably not more than once, but I'm expecting it to happen once. 50 is a very high number. <laughs> I, yep, you're right. <laughs> it I watched it a lot sure of is. Games, but Eric, <laughs> yeah. You're right. 
<laughs> Dom one are really good. Like the the thing that most surprised me about Dam One in this Rumble stage, and we had talked about this before, about how they like, you know, just are kind of really casual and where they almost nay ram it, you know, where it's like, all right, well, we're down some gold, let's just throw five people mid lane and team fight and then win and then win the game anyway. And like and they kind of have still been doing that, where unlike Royal, like they have some pretty significant gold deficits early. And like you can see Dam One like falling up behind in global gold. But then they enter this team fight phase, and then like um, Ghost has bad positioning. Uh, so then, so then Barrel goes in to bail him out. Barrel dies. Ghost still dies. And then Damwon wins this fight three v five. It's been like a recurring thing that's been happening in Rumble stage, and that is terrifying. That Showmaker, Khan, and Canyon can three v five games, and they have been. And it's so much of it is like their ability to hit skill shots. Um, really smart ultimate usages as well as cooldowns like how they position is just incredible. positioning is just insane all the yeah. time all the time the uh, ready eric I'm, I'm gonna blow your mind so i'm on team fights like a chinese team Royal plays the map like a korean team they they play it kind of like og blaze only it's jiaohu instead of flame right it's yep. like here's our top laner who's gonna get 100 cs up and take two turrets and then how are you going to react to this? Like that's that's their game plan, you know. It's like it's pretty slow for a for an LPL team of like you know they're not like getting twenty kills at like fifteen minutes or whatever, but but it still is like all right, well we've taken half the map, so yeah, and what like, are you going to do? And, and like Dom one team fights like better FPX from two years ago. Yeah, like that was always FPX's thing is they're just going to win the game in forty minutes because you can't team fight better than they can. Yeah, and that's a part of why, like, Kaisa's really come back as, like, the premier AD pick, which is fascinating, uh, partially because there's so many, like, priority bans, but but it's because of the team fight power, you know? And Senna's like, banned every game. <laughs> yeah, because it's, and it's for because one. of the team fight power, because it's, like, Kaisa being able to jump in and <laughs> lay down this huge burst of damage is incredible. Where, like, the Tristana pick, which was so huge in playoffs in all of these regions, it's, like, the team fight isn't the same. Like, it... It's very locked into front to back. You don't have this combo threat, and uh, and it's not the same. Same with the Jinx. Like even the it's, Jinx pick isn't as good. But the Trist is a thing until eighteen. Yeah, that's been the thing we've seen, right? If a Trist gets to level eighteen and gets to just be like, I have the best range in the game, mm. do something about it. Yeah, like that is a game changing thing. I um. Which C9 game from earlier in the tournament was I watching that they actually won? It was they hit they hit late game Zven's on Trist. Zven on Trist, yeah. Like and and it's just And he shot you them with their gun. actually <laughs> can't do anything about this. We're going to siege. I'm going to auto the turret from farther away than you can reach me from. It's going to die. Oh look, I have your base now. Like there there is a point in the game where if Trist gets to it, that works. And it and obviously like Trist has the power of still being able to flex. Because she's been played mid. Most of these players have played her mid at some point or another in their regions. Um, but I I think that it's the Kaisa and then Zaya is the other thing that I think has been a huge highlight pick, particularly for Royal. Because that's been a pick that Gala has fallen back on a lot this year. He, um, for my money, is the best Zaya player in the world. Um, Piper. I, I like Gala's, I, got, I like Gala's Zaya a lot. He's really good at the end. <laughs> Got him. He's good. They, they right. both do. They both do absolutely <laughs> absurd things on the jam. It's, it's a rock solid um, argument. <laughs> the 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 stupid gale force feather bending mechanics you can do. That oh they yeah. Have done in pro games are just absurd. It's nuts. It's like totally Gala, Gala, the the stuff Gala did. On, I think it was in playoffs that Gala was had some just absolutely berserk Zaya games. And like the she has come in because it, it's one of those things like you can protect her in team fights and she scales well. And she can protect herself, which is huge for keeping yourself safe amongst all of this stuff. As opposed to, like, it's easier to jump on and kill a Jinx, or in theory, a Senna. People haven't been wanting to test that, but... You need Except AoE damage for the it. Senna comps, which is the problem. Like, you need strong AoE damage to take out because of the the fog, the spectral mist ability where like you go invisible and they can't tell who they're hitting so like you need 
you you can't just have single target damage against Senna. Like you really have to be able to like like drop a Victor alt on top of the Senna Tom Kench. Like that's how you make that work. But Victor's really been struggling because the people playing the pick have been getting bodied by Zoe or by these other champions. So yeah, I, I don't think letting Senna through is a good idea. Um, but there there are ways to make it happen. Just for fun, I want to see a team ban Tom Kench mm. instead and let the Senna through. So and... I actually, I still don't like Tom Kench. Um, uh, I Because he's only used with Senna right now. Right. Well, That's the I only don't... thing he's for. And because so... he has to farm still. So... I don't think it's a good idea, and like, and it might be okay against Royal to let to do that strat, but it's not okay against Dam One. Uh, we've seen what happens if you ban Tom Kench and let Senna through against Dam One, and it's Senna Heimerdinger, and it's like there are there are things you don't want to allow or have in your League of you, Legends. You let, you let you get to let Barrel do fun things when you do that. Like these teams have probably scrimmed against Tiarnan in the recent future. They're not going to let this happen. Like there is no way that. Mad God, Lions that. That, was so, that. that was such a good game. <laughs> um, so like I I I don't think I don't think banning Tom Kench as the answer is the right play. Like um, the big thing that Tom Kench does is it is it like protects Senna from like you just locking in Ash. That's like the big thing that it fixes for you. Um, and and like you get the global pressure. Um, teams have been very poor about playing against Tom Kench ultimate so far in this tournament, which is fascinating. You'd expect teams to be better about that, but the pace of the game is so escalated that they haven't been able to react properly to knowing that the team has the extra global. Um, so we'll see, but like, it's, I, I don't think Tom, I don't think banning Tom Kench fixes anything. Picks to watch. Eric, what are you looking for? Um, uh, gosh. You mentioned the Kiana. I was saying Kiana a, was my biggest one. We already talked about that. I think that's a that's a fair option. I um, I I'm honestly gonna stick with you on this. I think the Kiana is like, or the other assassins mid, like the Zed. Yeah, be, Zed was gonna be would be like the things that I'd be on the lookout for here. I don't think that we've already seen a lot of depth in these roles, and I don't think there's going to be any new, like huge surprises um, in these other spots as we're going into the next round. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a surprise, but I would like to see more Volibear as an answer. But it looks good, and I think you can play around it, but I don't think it would be like a huge surprise. No. Well, I mean, it, yeah, there's like, we're not going to know where the huge surprise is going to be until and or if it happens, right? Like, I don't think anybody knew. Like, the, the support MF is the classic example of this, right? Like, nobody knew that was going to happen, much less, like, the, like, what the, because it was in response to Z uh, Zyra, right? Like, mm -hmm. something yeah. like that. Um, And, like, nobody knew that was the tech, but that was the tech. So, like, if somebody, for example, has a pick that they want to try into Lee Sin, for example, right? Who's been like pretty stable. This is the top laner that's getting played. It's Lee, it's Nar, it's Jace sometimes if you feel like it, Lucian if you're Zhao Hu, um, stuff like that. But like, it, it, is there something, is like somebody going to play a heavy split pusher? Like Khan has Fiora, he's a historical Fiora player. It the items suck right now. I can as a person who's been spending a lot of time playing Fiora and Camille in solo queue, the items suck right now. I'm hoping this new patch helps that. But um, I think Nocturne would be the one then if you wanted to see. I like I think it had potential. Yeah. Um, I mean it's better in mid lane. Um, uh, but if 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 you can... and it has gotten play like Kanabi destroyed yeah. C9 on Nocturne. I'm. I, I, like, if we're looking for stuff that hasn't been showing up as much, like, maybe Darius into Lee Sin. Darius into top Lee Sin seems like a very problematic scenario. Um, Who played the Darius? That was played uh, once. It was in the first round. Yeah, it looked um, good. Was it, was it Boss? It might have been. Yeah. It was somebody. It wasn't no, Bio no, no, Panther. it was, um, it was, it was the, it was Pain. Who, uh, who was it on Pain? Oh, um, shoot. Robo? Robo? Robo played. Robo. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And it looked the, good. The other, like, if we're calling back to stuff from the first stage, um, Evie's Urgot 
is the other one that I thought. I think it was just a matchup specific thing with the GP, but that pick looked really good. Hmm. And Her was Grunt like and Darius are both very strong if you get like the right matchup and the right items. Well, um, and, and, like, and Urgot too, like it if I remember the end of the the because that was in the Damwon game, the first Damwon game, and if he had hit like the last alt chain DFM wins the game, like it was winning them team fights. Yeah. Um, so it's like I, I think it's like you have to not get dumpstered too hard in the lane for all of these things in just like the rock, paper, scissors game that top lane is. But it's there there's stuff floating around there that I think like I think there's something in top lane that we don't know about, but I don't know what. I hope there is. Forbidden technology. Uh you just lack the poppy into Leeson, right, David? It works. Like you're gonna get shoved in. But yeah, that doesn't suck they fun. can't dive you like that. <laughs> that's the, the like that. It's the thing with Poppy into that in the Lee matchup specifically is like you, you're going to get pushed in on a turret, which Poppy does in most of her matchups at this point. You don't bring as much damage as even like the more tank build Lee Sin that we've seen be the standard, but they can't dive you. like you just oh, you, you have lean Italy. Okay, try and dive me. Dude, just go, seriously, come come top. 1v2, let's go. <laughs> like, I it's it would work. I I imagine you could get pushed off of farm if there was jungle even if they don't dive you, like what are you gonna do if they try to push you away from under the turret and just like go go start to proxy? Like if they bring the jungle up jungle up to pressure you, they're not gonna dive you, but they're gonna take your farm. And if they can create too much of a lead to deal with. And like Poppy, like she's she scales okay, but she's a tank. Like we just aren't seeing pure tanks right now. Other than like I did Fudge even has Fudge did Fudge play Malphite in the tournament at all? Like it's just did. um the the problem with tanks has been the like with the Kaisa pick specifically. Oh yeah, Kaisa like, just murders you. <laughs> well, and also just avoids you, right? Like having a pure tank doesn't mean as much if the AD enemy ADC is just ulting your backline. Like it, it doesn't mean anything to have a super tank. Yeah, like there, there, there are comps that Poppy could be really, really good into if you wanted to do that. That it wouldn't take that much of a stretch outside of meta to do. So let's say enemies, enemy locks in first three picks. Um, Lee, Nidalee, and a support, right? That looks really good. And say you're on blue side, so you've got blue four and five. So then uh, red four, they lock in Trist to flux between AD and mid. Okay, I can I can play Poppy into this matchup because I'm good into Lee, I'm good into Nidalee, I'm good into Trist. And then, like, Trist can't get away from me. If I get, on, if I get a flank on the Trist, she can't W. I'm going to come push W and she can't jump out. Like, so it's I I think it could be like like a lot of this stuff it could work situationally, but yeah, is that like Kai says a huge problem. <laughs> so, pick for Dom one, uh, Madden. Oh, damn one. Yeah. Yep. Three zero. <laughs> oh wow! Sorry, guys. Confident. Sorry guys, I don't think it's gonna be close. Yeah, I I think the kid gloves come off in these best of fives. Yeah. I think well, the final is going to be awesome. like assuming the final is Dom one row. I think that's going to be an awesome best of five. Yeah, and, and Dom one. I, I, legit, so I legitimately much. don't know who's going to win that. I I, I would pick Dom one if I had to pick, but it, I think it's going to be an awesome series. Yeah, like Dom like Dom one. I think has grown the most over the course of this tournament, and as far as like their approach to the game, where like. Uh, having teams that actually pressure them, unlike what they were used to in the LCK, has really done a lot for like actually like making them try things early, like not just running it down mid lane, uh, attempting these different pressure plays, uh, seeing more out of Showmaker and Khan specifically uh, as far as what they've been bringing to the table. Like he hasn't just been on Scion this entire time, uh, is like really a sign that this team has stepped up strategically is how they're approaching things, and like that's. Um, that's, that's really good for, like, the overall health of the scene that, like, th they have to, to, like, take home from this and actually build up. Uh, 
versus RNG, who I don't think have actually gotten too much out of this, except for the fact they need to shore up some strategic points of the map. I, I do think that Royal can take the best of five against M1, though. Just just because they, they're consistent. And, and I yep. think and I think they have a game plan they can play to it. Um, and if they get shook on a game, they'll 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 come back and fix it. And then I think that they can confidently go into that at finals. Yeah, I I believe Dom One is the better team, but I trust Royal more to not screw it up. I I think is where I'm at because Barrel's been running it down too much. Yeah, if he cuts that out, they're gonna win easily. He's he's been doing a little too much. Yeah, that that whole bot lane is just like a coin, and it's gonna flip some way. And it, what what is like a, like a three six nine bot lane kind of scenario? Ghost, <laughs> Ghost's career is so fascinating. Like, <laughs> but he it's so interesting because I I I, Ghost I think from I was being reading... like the most overstable AD carry who they could possibly find to make their map consistent into like. Him like coin flipping the game is really what it's felt like so far. Oh, in this and, and, stage. And, and if you think even before they signed him, he was like, he was playing for bottom tier teams. He was not a Gen Air ADC. He didn't have all the like reputation and love. Like I, I, I think it was some some Reddit comments on an interview he did earlier where like if you look at his whole career, like he played for I want to say he played for Kongdu the split. They almost went 018. Like he he played for awful teams before he joined Dom One, and there's there's always he's a world champion he has his own gin skin so there's only so much i can like talk any level of trash but like there's always been this little corner of your brain that's like that dude played for a dead last place team in the lck not that long ago <laughs> he could be that person once again at any moment you just never know when it will strike <laughs> yeah as soon as he signs for an na team what oh, God. With unlimited uh, import slot. What a terrible idea. Oh, I hope it doesn't happen. I'll be so just disenfranchised. Not actually, though. I'll probably still care about it. Well, okay, say, here. But... Let, let's, let's end with an NA question since, since we brought it back to this. Um, if you were a general manager of any LCS team right now as it stands... Which Pentanet player would you sign to start an LCS next split? All of them. Start. Start. In I, LCS. I'm I'm Golden Guardians. I signed that whole fucking team. <laughs> or a CLG, and I signed that whole fucking team with with what I pay for Broxa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Um... <laughs> I think I'd actually go Chaz. I think NA's mid lane pool is still very flawed and super weak, and picking an aggressive mid laner um, who's unafraid is like probably where I would go. Even if Chaz isn't necessarily the highlight of this roster, like I would go there. Um, I Chaz is absolutely who I'd pick. <laughs> yeah, I would go Chaz. Like, like Pabu's great, but like. We haven't seen good success from bringing in junglers, and so I'm more afraid of that, if that makes sense. <laughs> well, and, and the other thing, like, Papu, relative to a lot of the oceanic talent that has been brought over, is older, right? Like, if if you think about the first time that Papu reached any kind of notoriety on an international level, it was All-Stars 2018, right? Like, He's been playing in the OPL and LCO now for f four, five, six years. And the players that have, I think, I I would need to look, but like Tally, I think, is the only player who was even brought over who'd been playing in the OPL for that long to play in NA, and he's already out of a job, right? Like the other longer time OPL veterans are all coaching. Like Swiffer, I think Swiffer is coaching. Swiffer. Swiffer and Swiper are both coaching in NA. I think Sw I think Swiffer's in EU. So but like... they moved over to EU. They were on GGU, um, like Golden Guardians, like yep. coaching staff, and I think they got moved. Yeah. Um, so so like, it's not what NA teams have been going for, right? Like King was signed off of like three or four splits when he was first brought over. 
same for like um i don't think triple had been around that long when he was brought over to play an academy so like pabu would be a not traditional signing right like if you're gonna get a player that's been playing pro league for five or six years get whatever token korean wants to retire or whatever eu player wants to retire like broxa for example <laughs> um i i like pabu a lot i probably would rather have broxa than pabu playing in lcs i Are you sure feel free to disagree <laughs> i did like, <laughs> I, I think i would probably rather have brox okay. and that and that says a lot about never not but like I would I be very my, interested to bring Chaz in. I think that I think would my, be a great move. My second pick would probably be Decoy. I think I Decoy agree. has looked really good in this tournament and uh and supports like the other role that like for NA talent has been like under like very weak, right? That's why Vulcan's worth all the big bucks. So like big bring in a JJ. good support player. Yeah, I think C9 should sign Pabu. Pabu doesn't C9. flash in the scuttle crab. Damn yeah. <laughs> or just int tilt off the face of the earth yeah so uh, pabu to replace prob pabu to replace blabber that's yeah. a so, c9 fixes their problems uh who's their who's their academy jungler um i don't think he gets benched for that he but no he doesn't get benched but but like he literally won mvp yeah it's churn fire season. like <laughs> like Speaking of junglers from OS or who have played in OS, like Shurnfire is their academy jungler right now. Yep. Like, if they're benching Blabber for anyone, it's probably Shurnfire. Um, like, um, man. But he was yeah, no, tilted no, if, though. If, I've if seen if C nine want to do it. They 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 go back on Perks's contract and sell him back to G two because G two sucks now. Um, and and then just bring up their academy team and play um play fudge Shernfire, sign chaz king isles just play an opl <laughs> be pretty good like yep. say one thing cost about effective OPL players that team would make teams. playoffs in na yeah, yeah. i firmly say, believe that say one thing about opl players and teams it's that they're used to playing on regions which have like low server populations and you know less than stellar like Pink. solo queue competitive edges like you know it's these players are used to that and perform at worlds like you know that's a that's a pretty good stance to take in how you're building a roster in NA. yep eric what you been playing is it still just tristana uh, it's a non-zero amount of tryst. I've also, uh, I've, I've really, I really enjoy the new Blitz Crank skin, where it's Blitz and Crank, and I got the Disco Chroma for it. So uh, I've been playing a non-zero amount of Blitz Crank to really get to enjoy this, like, you know, uh, quality animated experience. Similarly, but a slightly different skin vibe. I have been playing a lot of Camille because Coven Camille is the sickest skin in the game. And it's, I think, the first time I've actually bought a skin at full price in, like, three years. You don't mean years. Coven, right? You mean the, uh, the new oh, the, one, right? the new Arcanist one. The tarot card. Ar Arcane? Is that what it is, or? I'm gonna go look, because, yeah, it's not, Co Coven is an older one. Correct. Yeah. Let me open my League of Legends account real quick. Skins. What skin did I buy last night? <laughs> um, Arcana. There it is. <laughs> in a sleepless yeah, Arcana, fur. Arcana Camille is the sickest skin in the game. <laughs> Yeah, that skin line's it's really so nice. Cool. Like the splash art is good, the in-game animations are good. And Camille is the next champion I was working on learning anyway. So like, let's go. Do it, do and it. And all the chromas are also really good. So it was a congratulations, right? You got me to give give you give you my money again. How dare you? <laughs> Steven, have you been playing games? No, I haven't. I've been um I'm taking my summer break. Uh, so I can come back at peak potential to do that last minute grind for gold and then stop playing again. <laughs> yeah. Steven wasn't playing League of Legends because he was watching me play Donkey Kong Country. Yes, which you uh, should go watch that episode. Right here? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. If uh if you're if you're interested in hearing more League of Legends content or watching us play uh classic video games, uh like and subscribe to Funky Games down below. Uh, also, feel free to visit uh, the Funky Store. Uh, is it Funky Dot Store? Yes, it is. is it's F N K Y Dot Store. store. 
And uh, and from there, you can get really cool uh, T-shirts or stickers or other assorted uh, nostalgia products to help you remember when video games were fun and uh, weren't just loot boxes. So, um, yeah. If you're going to spend money on microtransactions, spend it with us. <laughs> Damn. There it is. That's how we're gonna end. <laughs> so we'll I imagine we'll be back uh next week to chat about how this all went down and look forward to the return of the regular seasons across the world, including the the year of the duck part six. Oh, did he get where is he at? So <laughs> Nice. I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> but you gotta try it. Every team's gotta try the duck. Just a little, a little, li- a li- a li- <laughs> that you just signed last split. Excel. Everybody's gotta try we'll a little bit of the duck. Next week. <laughs> and and we'll talk about EG promoting an ABC straight from a uh, amateur to the LCS, which is a is a big move. But gotta do it that's for after the tournament. So we'll have MSI final and semifinal reacts and prep for summer coming at you probably next week sometime. Now that I am somewhat back living a human life again. He says with confidence. <laughs> Definite. Soon to uh, be shook. <laughs> look, S- Steven, I know you know this and have had oh, to do this yes. well, but Eric, oh, you I'm still doing it. Until, you, until you've had an infant shit all over your arm. <laughs> You really just don't understand what life's about until you've been there. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. That was my night tonight, so, you know. It... <laughs> All right, well. So, yeah, there you go. This has been the Reaction Time Podcast.